What financial milestones should you have hit by each age? Time to think like an investor. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Josh and I am a certified financial planner. I run a personal wealth management business, which means I deal with people's finances all day long and I help them work towards achieving whatever goal is on their plate and I help them get invested and prepare for the future, which means I know a thing or two about what reasonable expectations you should set for where you should be financially by each age. Now, I'm imagining you clicked the title of this video because you wanted to feel great about yourself. You thought, hey, I've reached some financial milestones. I'm gonna watch this video, this guy telling me all these things that I've already done and I can close check, check, check. But the reality is, is this might be a little bit different because I have some selection bias in my mind because I work with people who are financially successful. Otherwise, they wouldn't have come to work with me. But that's what I'm basing this off of. I'm basing it off of clients that I work with every day, the ages they're at, and what it really means to be to be successful at each stage of life. Now, where should we start? Let's start with where should you be by the age of 10? And you might think that's ridiculous. No one who's not 10 yet is watching this. Well, first of all, you might find that some of the things that you're supposed to be done by 10, you don't really have nailed down all that well. So I wanna talk about maybe if you're older or you have kids, what might you want to impress upon them before they get to the age of 10? Now, first things first, and a lot of you are gonna go, oh, I don't even meet the first thing. You need to be very confident with your ability to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. The funny thing about this is it's unbelievably powerful because I work as a financial planner all day long doing projections, and I would say 75% of the math that I do relating to finance really falls into those four categories. And there's lots of people who are probably watching this thinking, this is insane, am I watching a video about a guy who's telling me to learn how to, you know, plus minus times divide? And the reality is yes, because not everybody is all too comfortable with that. So make sure your kid's good at math. But more importantly, and what I really mean from the heart, is you gotta get your kid at the, before the age of 10 their own bank account, and maybe even get them to work for an allowance. Because what you should have by 10 is an understanding that money is stored in an abstract place and maybe you get a debit card and maybe you have a bank account that protects that money for you. And it gets them involved in the financial system. It gives them some agency over making their own financial decisions. And lastly, the thing I think that is so important before 10 is that you have tried to sell something. I think that not enough people start the lemonade stand, start the little side business, start the hockey card hustle or whatever it might be. I think it's so important as a young person to impress upon yourself that it is not that scary to learn how to sell. And if you can learn how to sell and you can learn how to persuade people and you can learn how to create a win-win and financially benefit from that, you're setting yourself up for this foundational belief in success in the world of capital, in the world of the economy, and in the world of building your own career. Now, where should you be by the time you're 20? Well, this is where all those financial blogs would say, you know, you have to have $20,000 saved and no debt and your student debt's gone, even though you're not graduated yet. All these ridiculous expectations. But I think the most important thing I did before I turned 20, I think the most important thing anybody can do for their finances before they turn 20 is think about, with no filter, with no guilt, think about all of the things in life that you want. What are all the things that you deeply want in your future? Think of yourself at 30 and at 40 and at 50. For me, this was like, man, I really like cool cars. I really like traveling the world. I like having a nice pair of jeans and a nice shirt every now and then. I like to have nice clothes. I wanna have good experiences. I wanna be able to show my family things. And what I encourage people to do is sit down and price all of those things out. Your dream car, how much does it cost? Go on the real estate listing. What's your dream house? Find out what it costs. I think one of the common denominators among a lot of the successful people I know financially is that they never really limited themselves in terms of the goals that they set and what they could achieve. They thought more practically, well, how much money would I have to make to afford that? And when I did that for the first time when I was 14, it changed my life. I kind of became a one track mind towards my career because I knew that things aren't that hard to afford if you can work towards them over a long period of time and if you can believe that you can do that. So as a young person, I want you to go out before the age of 20 and make sure you've done this. And if you're over 20 and haven't done it, do it. You have to price out what your dream life looks like. And then you have to think about what are the possible careers out in the world? What do they pay? You know, what does a lawyer make? What does a business owner make? What does an accountant make? And walk through all these options and think about 
Am I willing to push the boundaries on my career trajectory and make sacrifices and get outside of my financial comfort zone in order to achieve those things that I want? And to what degree am I willing to do that? Because as a young person, you have your whole life ahead of you and you can decide if you wanna take those risks that are ultimately gonna to get to you to where you want to go. So before you write it all off and say, well, yeah, I'm gonna do this because my parents did that, think about it. Figure out how much you need to have that dream lifestyle and figure out a plan to get there. Regardless if you know how to get there, at least think about it and start working towards it. And to get more practical, if you're 20 and you haven't started investing yet, that's a problem. Every single person needs to deeply understand the idea of compounding before they turn 20 years old. Everything in finance comes down to the exponential function, how things compound over time. You know, you work a lot in the beginning and you don't get a lot out of it, but that creates a future where you work very little in the future and get a lot out of it. It's about time in the game and letting your investment gains and your network and your career compound on itself. You really have to internalize the idea of compounding and you have to be investing by the time you're 20. Now, where should you be by the time you're 30? Well, I think, you're 30, first of all, which is really too bad. And on top of all those things about how bad it is to be 30, you don't wanna have things like debt dragging you down. By the time you're 30, it's very important that you're out from under the borrowing that you did in your teens and your 20s, whether it was student debt or maybe buying a car that got you status for a short period of time that made you feel like a loser. You gotta get all those debts out of the way so that you can start building something towards your financial future. Now, in addition to being debt free, it is so important that you're in the habit of saving 10 or more per percent of your gross income every year without noticing it. You have to be in the habit already. By the time you're 30, there should be money coming out of your checking account every time you get paid that is being saved for your future and it's been there long enough that you don't even think about it anymore. It just happens. It's not something you have to prepare for. And ultimately, the aspiration is that by the time you're 30, you have one year's salary invested. If you've made 100K at the year of 30, you should have 100K saved. If you've made 40K a year, you should have 40K saved. It's relative to your income, but you should make sure you have one year's worth of income invested for the future. Now, how about the age of 40? I think the biggest thing that I see is most people's career advancements, the most rapid part of their career where their income expands and their job title increases, all these great things, that happens in the mid to late 30s. So if you're 40, it's important that you can look back and remember specific instances where you took a risk where you negotiated a raise, where you fought for a job position, where you try to give it your best shot to advance in your career. Because if you get out on the other end of your 40s with very little forward mobility or forward potential, you might have missed out on that period where you had that rapid acceleration. So in your 30s, what we see with clients all the time is that those 30s are such an expansion area period where their career either takes off or doesn't. And that doesn't mean if you're 40, you should give up. It just means statistically speaking, the biggest group of people see the most rapid rise in their career in their 30s. Now by 40, there is no excuse for you to not have a financial plan, okay? And I don't mean one that you built on Excel. I don't mean a thing that you wrote down on a piece of paper. I mean, you go to a professional who knows about taxes and inflation and interest rates and the stock market and the economy, insurance and all these things, and you have worked with them to define what is point B of my life? Where am I trying to go? And where am I now? And how are we going to use different financial tactics and strategies to get us there? And you have that in a written signed document that you review frequently. If you're 40 and you have no trajectory, you have no financial plan, you have no set of action steps that's gonna get you to where you want to go, you're probably in a spot where it might not happen. You might go the rest of your life without ever having an action plan. So it's very important that by the time you are 40, you have a written concrete financial plan done by a professional. And lastly, it's a little ambitious, but the aspiration is to have three times your average salary saved. By the time you're 40, if you've made 100,000, you should have about $300,000 socked away compounding for your future. Now, by the time you're 50, what I see all the time is that people's situations start to get a lot more complex, right? They now have kids in the picture and there's education to pay for. They might have a vacation property. Retirement is five or 10 years away. Different employers are trying to get them to stay on and consult or maybe get a promotion. There's a lot of complexity in those years. And what you really need to have by the time you're 50, if you've accumulated some wealth over the course of your life, is a team of professionals. You need to have nailed down who is my guy as my accountant? Who is my gal as my lawyer? 
Who is it that's going to help me with my investments? You have to build that team of specialists. So when you get into that really difficult, complex period of life, you have a team of people that you already trust. These might be relationships that you've nurtured over the course of your life. For me, I've had one corporate lawyer forever, one accountant forever, one insurance guy forever, me. And all that being said is I am developing this group of relationships that I can rely on to give me advice throughout the years. Now, the aspiration for 50 is that you have six times your annual salary saved and you're stocking away as much money as you can because retirement is just around the corner. But I think one of the most important things I find with people in the 50s and 60s area is that they're approaching retirement and they're not exactly sure how they're going to spend their time. They haven't done an analysis of what they find meaningful in life. And if all of a sudden the 40 hour work week goes away, where are they going to spend that time? Some people are very excited. I mean, I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to drink my ties on the beach all day long. I'm going to travel all year. And what they find is that gets pretty boring after three months when you're not being extremely productive, when you're not contributing something. So one thing to think about in your 50s is, where do I get meaning from? And the experience I've had in life, where should I be deploying all this new free time to do something productive and creative and meaningful with the remaining years that I have? So it's pivotally important to think about what are the things that I find meaningful and how am I gonna allocate the 40 hours a week that are now newly available to me? What am I gonna do to make sure that I'm actually living life now that I have all this free time? Anyways, guys, these are some of the milestones that I have in my head of what I'd like to achieve by each different age and what I think you should really consider having done by certain phases of your life. So if you enjoyed this video whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.